Hey YouTube. Um, so, uh, you know, we're getting some stuff done around the shop. Uh, got to get this handle for Big Mill, the knee handle done because it's uh, paining me to um, have uh, have it down. I, I wanted to use it today and uh, wasn't able to. So um, I've got some drawings, links down below. Um, and uh, tell you what, we're going to go to the computer. I'm going to pull the computer up and uh, we're going to go over the CAD a little bit, how I decided to do this, why I decided to do it this way, and then we'll come back over and make it. And uh, if you remember last time, we spoke about this uh, armor plate mystery steel that um, was just all I could do to drill a hole in the stuff. So I said, forget that. Found me this nice piece of uh, 12L14. And then uh, this piece of flat bar, half inch flat bar, is going to be the crank section. And then this is the rotary handle that we're going to press into the um, half inch flat bar. Uh, so that's kind of the whole process. Um, I tossed around whether or not to do this as a, a welded setup, just weld the crank handle on, which would have been easy. But, um, you know, I'm not a welder. Really. I can weld, I just, I'm no good at it. Um, so, uh, we're going to make this a machining project because I like cutting metal that way. So let's go to the computer and look at the CAD work and then we'll come back here and we'll start making some chips. Hey guys, okay here we are at the computer. We're in SolidWorks and um, we got um, the assembly here drawn up for uh, what is going to be our um, crank handle. Uh, it's pretty easy to see here. We got a, just a few major components. We got the hub, which will be made out of this piece of uh, two inch 12L. Uh, there'll be an ID, a cross hole. Um, there'll be this um, half inch uh, boss, under, undersized boss. And then I was thinking about using this um, kind of a unusual technique for me, something I haven't done, uh, which is this um, uh, uh, which is this Scotch key, I think it's called, this round key. I've never done this before, so we're just going to give it a shot. Um, I could just come in here with an end mill and cut a f straight square key and slip a square key in there and be fine. And if this doesn't work out, then we'll probably end up doing that. But um, I just thought I'd give it a try. And um, so I don't know that I'll do two. I might just do one. Then there's a large washer here and then a, a tapped hole in the center here. It's a tapped uh, quarter by, I mean, a half by 20 uh, to hold this whole assembly in place. Um, so... Uh, this is at least a guide. I am making the, the handle a little longer than the handle I had on there. The handle I had on there came off the 307, and it was 10 inches center-to-center -center distance. And I'm making this one 12 inches center-to-center -center distance. So um, uh, it'll give it just a little more leverage. Not that you really need it, but uh, allow me to... Um, uh, get a little finer control over um, over my, my Z position. So I'm going to go ahead and print the papers out here for this. And um, then we're going to go back over and start making some chips. All right, we got our piece of stock in the lathe. And we're going to gingerly face this off and um, face this end off center drill this end here then we're going to swap it in for end face off the other end clean it up and um, then we're going to start uh, cutting our id and od dimensions so let's get going
All right, we got our, our face here. We got our center drill in place. Put a center in. All right, we took off a nice cut there. We got to come down another 257 to get to our uh, finished OD. So let's get it going here. We're going to take off another 100. Machine in 12L, just giving us a nice crisp little chip and a really nice surface finish. Too bad you can't really weld this stuff. Fifty-seven, one fifty-eight large, which makes sense. So, can only take a hundred off. So, let's dial in another hundred. And crank her up again. about another yep 56 all right we're still about eight thou large on our finished dimension and I'm just gonna leave that to clean up later after we get a cut across the whole thing we can make one final cleanup cut to give us a nice finish so what we're going to do now is uh, cut this, um, uh, we're going to cut half inch in, we're going to cut down to a, um, uh, a radius of uh, 0.625, a 5 eighths inch radius. And uh, that's going to be the boss that the handle is going to index on. So let's measure that off. Let's see. Whew, that's a little hot.
check our dimension here. All right, 493, we cut another 7 thou off of that to get to our to get to our target dimensions. Make one little skim cut here. So now we're going to go ahead and get the center out of here. We're going to go ahead and drill our 29624 inch tap size for the half by 20 bolt. Then we're going to turn the whole thing around and chuck up on this boss. Uh, I mean, we're going to chuck up on the, a major OD and face the other end and center drill the other end. Then we'll get a center in the other end, chuck up on here, and that'll allow us to cut the whole face to get us a nice. Um, even cut across the whole face make it look good so uh, let's go ahead and get ready to drill this uh, tap hole all right slowed it down here a good bit maybe a bit much Slip a tap up in here. I'll get this tap started. Get it turned around here. Again, we're going to take a cleanup cut over this whole dimension, so we don't really have to worry about getting jaw marks on it. Let's start facing this side off.
I'm going to chew this down, get down to uh, our uh, same dimension here. close in our dimension here we take that dimension zero and then see where we are here we're 62 big so we'll come off 10 20 30 40 50, 62. We're just going to go ahead and shoot for that because we're still going to do a cleanup cut over this whole OD. Well, let's see how good we did there. Let's get all these rings up in here. Target dimension, measure dimensions. We are two. I can deal with that. Some time, man. All right. Now that we got this um, the OD mostly done here, we're going to. Um, start to drill and bore the ID for the knee crank which is a uh, .877 so let me go ahead and get set up for that Still a little short. Have to drill about another tenth. All right. We need to take a little off here. Let's get a better measurement there. 873. So we're just a little undersized. I really need about three or four thousand now. Let's get another measurement here. Okay. Uh, I need a couple thou clearance. So I'm going to go ahead and make a cut through here with just this touch off and see where we go from there.
and measure again. Seventy six, eight seventy seven. That should be right on the money. All right, I got my uh, bore, my hole drilled out here to a reasonable size. Wrong way. Put it between center, uh, between uh, on a tailstock here. I'm grab it here. that cut Oops, wrong way. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a cut across the whole face we're going to clean this up to uh, our final dimension This particular component is complete. Let's um, take over the milling machine and make sure that it fits. All right. So you got your engagement. You push it forward to engage. Turn. Of course, there's no pin in there now. Pull it back to disengage. So that's the normal um, movement there. So everything looks good. Now uh, time to go to the mill and uh, start putting our uh, cross holes and lock holes uh, in this piece right here. All right, we're over at the milling machine and we got the uh, crank nose. Uh, chucked up in the um, uh, spacer here and um, 
I've already taken the center finder and picked up these two edges and got my center and zeroed this thing out in the DRO. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this face and I'm going to show you how when you, when you really have to have it right, this is my uh, center finder technique. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling back and wait for the kick to kick. Now I'm going to zero my DRO on my Y, hit zero, enter. I'm going to run it back out. I'm going to kick it again. I'm going to come back to it. Now, without watching the DRO, I'm going to start watching for that kick again. And there we are. We got the kick. And let's go up to the DRO. And we're at zero on Y. So you know when you when you picked it up two times and you repeat like that, that you're good. So um, I've been told that electronic edge finders are actually a little better um, than mechanical edge finders. So I may have to get me one of those um, here shortly just to just to try it out. So now that I've picked up that edge, we're going to go ahead and move back my distance plus half the diameter of the edge finder and we're going to drill the cross hole and ream the cross hole for the uh, split pin that holds this to the machine. Alright, so the um, recommended hole size for a quarter inch split pin is 250 to 256. Um, I've got a 252 reamer so that's what I'm going to use. Uh, right now we're going to spot and then we're going to drill through carbide uh, number seven drill bit I use these so I got a bunch of these like cheap and I use them for spotting they work fantastic I also have a little 3 8 inch stubby that works pretty good too now we're going to drill straight through with a quarter quarter inch to straight 250 and we're going to ream it out the final size. down a bunch here. Let's get it. Let's get it in back gear. Let's get our little shorty reamer. at about 100 RPM. Turn the whole indexer up this way so we can, um, well actually we need to make our handle first. So this is probably the end of this video here. Um, we need to make the handle so that we can drill our Dutch keys at the same time. So we'll follow up with the uh, little bandsaw work and some um, uh, 
with the handle, the actual crank portion here in the next video. So be safe in the shop and I'll talk to you soon. Anyway, just to show you that it would fit before I called it an evening. I didn't actually have a quarter inch split pin so I stuck it in here with a quarter inch drill bit uh, through there which means I can't push it forward to engage it to actually turn the knee but um, there you go and then you see we got a little room here I wanted to try to add enough room here so that my crank could clear a stubby handle there is no handle on this on my y-axis wheel so I wanted to get a stubby handle there and I wanted to add a little room here so that the crank could clear it so that's why I made it so long uh, good night and be back with you soon